Hi hey everyone. So after a very long break, I am back with another 3D printing video. This time I'm going to be installing the Wi-Fi module in my Prusa Mini. Uh, so a bit of background. <clears throat> I Earlier this week, I upgraded the Prusa Mini to the latest framework, which I think 4.4.1. And after upgrading it, I was just playing through the menu and I found an option for Wi-Fi, which I had not seen before. And I <clears throat> wanted to figure out how I could get Wi-Fi on the Prusa Mini. Uh, what I've been doing is to have a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint uh, connected to the printer. Uh, so this is a quick overview of what we'll be doing. So the printer itself does not have a Wi-Fi module by default. Uh, and in order to enable Wi-Fi connectivity, I'm going to install an additional module that I bought off of Amazon. Uh, I'll leave a link to the product that I bought in the description of this video, but let me show you a the packaging that it came in and the part number. So this is the module. The brand is Sent IoT. Uh, the module name is ESP01 and all of the information that you need to figure out how, how, what module what modules are compatible what you'll need uh, you can find in the very amazingly detailed and helpful guide by Prusa uh, I link that uh, in the description as well but the process for installing the Wi-Fi module and configuring it seems simple enough so yeah let's get started <clears throat> so to start off uh, we'll need two or three tools uh, as suggested by the guide on Prusa as well uh, f first is obviously the module itself the Wi-Fi module which is this the other is a 2.5 mm allen key and something else that might be useful we'll see is a uh, nose head plier uh, this is for removing the power button so to start off uh, we're going to remove the cover of the electronics here and uh, before i started i removed the power cable And to remove the uh, cover, there's one hex nut over here. Uh, let me show it to you. Yeah, so it's this one. This is the only one we'll need to remove. Here is the electronics board, the control board, and the, if you can see right here, this is where the module is supposed to go, the Wi-Fi module. Now this <clears throat> power switch, if you can see from here, now this power switch is in the way, so the next thing we need to do is remove that. And the Prusa guide is also extremely helpful here uh, because they talk about how to best remove this there are two clips on either side of this switch and you can press them with your hands to remove them uh, and the suggested way in the guide is to remove from this side first uh, the side near the usb port and then angle it a bit to remove from the other side so that's what we'll do yeah there you go so this requires a bit of force but it's uh, simple enough to remove and so yeah let me show you if, uh, so right below the power cable is the 
uh, are the headers where we can attach the device, the Wi-Fi module. And so we'll do that next. We'll just open up the module. Uh, we'll be careful to hold it from the edges and just try and install it there. And yeah, that's installed there. There's really only one way or orientation in which you can install this. So I don't think there's any space to get it wrong. Let me just try and move this cable out of the way. I think this might be. No, I think that's good enough. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now that that's done, uh, we need to put the power switch back in, and I think it should be. Yep. Yeah, easy enough. And now the last part is going to be just adding that. Uh, cover back. So this thing has uh, a few slots for the cable now here is this this large one uh, the one ne next to the not is the one where the bed cable comes out of and then this other one this is where the extruder cable comes out of and then this piece has this slot for the filament sensor cable so and we don't need this to be too tight just enough that it does not shake loose when the printer is working there we go yeah i think and now the cables are pinched just want to make sure of that and that's it uh, as far as the installation goes so let's power it up and see if it detects the uh, module Now I'm seeing this uh, prompt to use the online guide to set up your Wi-Fi module. Now this is the same guide that I'm using, so I've already seen it, so I will follow the instructions which are to press continue first, ESP, yes, so it needs to update the firmware of the module that we just installed. So let's do continue, way to configure the Wi-Fi credentials. Uh, you have to connect a USB stick, uh, connect it to the printer. The printer will write a file to it in a specific format. You open that on your PC and update the values of your Wi-Fi network name and password in that file and then attach that USB back. So let me get that USB and then we'll continue this. So now that the USB is installed, let's continue. Generate Wi-Fi credentials, continue. Okay, now at this point, uh, I am going to disconnect the USB from the printer, uh, connect it to my PC, and edit the configuration file there. And so this is the uh, firmware file that I added to the USB when I was doing the upgrade a couple of days ago, and this pusher printer settings.ini file this is the file that the printer just generated and this is the one in which we have to update it comes from but so 
so let's open this yes there we go uh, and so as the guide says uh, the only things we need to change are the ssid and the psk the ssid is the name of your wi-fi for me that is wi-fi that's the name i have for my home wi-fi and one thing to note is this will only uh, the printer will only connect to a 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi network so in case you have that and most routers today uh, if they have a 5 gigahertz network they also provide a 2.4 gigahertz network uh, so older devices can connect uh, but you might have it turned off in that case you need to go into your router settings and turn that 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi network back on yeah uh, over here i will add the password and i will now save this now these are the only two things i need to change here i don't need to change the key ma ma management setting now that that's done let me inject the drive there we go and we'll go back to the uh, printer and plug this in and see uh, what happens next okay so i am back at the printer with the updated credentials file i've plugged in the usb which now shows us this icon here and i will press continue to see what happens now the guide does say that this might take a few minutes ah okay that was pretty fast nice connection successful wi-fi is now ready for use great we can click continue and that's it as far as the installation and configuration goes and now the next part is to get the settings that we need to connect to the printer uh, which means there's an ip address that the printer has and then there's an api key uh, which i assume is used for authentication to make sure that only people who should have access to the printer are able to access the wi-fi interface so let's find that out i think it should be in the information menu let's see maybe not settings network great so here is the ip address i will note that down somewhere and then we go into the prusa link sub menu and this gives me the api key uh, which i have to copy all right so i have now copied the key and that's all we need from the printer itself let me just move this back to main menu Great. and now i go back to my pc and uh, try and access the push link interface from there and i'll record the screen as before so you can see what i'm doing there as well now it's asking for the api key this is the same api key we saw when we were setting it up and i copied let me just copy that here and yeah there we go uh i think one of the uh something to note is your usb stick needs to be kept connected with the printer uh, when you want to use the prusa link interface uh, and i think the reason for that is the hardware inside the printer has no storage of its own and so if you upload a file a g-code file to your printer the printer has no way to store it before it can print it right and so it uses the attached usb to store as storage to store those files uh, which we can see here as well so there's no other storage which is why we need to keep the usb stick attached and yeah we can uh, uh, see all of these different uh, values we can see the temperatures and yeah i think uh, that's it I'll, I'll start using this from now on i'll see if i run into any trouble but hopefully not 
and uh, I think the good thing is I no longer need that Raspberry Pi attached to the printer uh, to get printing over Wi-Fi and I think you should also be able to configure uh, the Prusa slicer to connect directly to the printer and just uh, after sliding, slicing just send the file directly to the printer uh, but I'll see if that's possible. I know uh, that I've, I have that configured with Octoprint where in the slicer after I'm done slicing, I can just ask Prusa Slicer to upload the file to Octoprint and then I can just uh, have it start printing as well. Um, I'm sure the same capability exists for Prusa Link as well. But yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and if there's any questions or comments you have, please uh, leave them here and I'll try to answer uh, and help as much as I can. Thank you so much.